Something bizarre is unfolding on top of the Earth. Something that humanity has never seen before. Giant craters are mysteriously appearing out of nowhere. First spotted in the Yamal Peninsula in northern Russia, and now they're emerging across the entire Arctic region. Unlike typical sinkholes that have flat rims and collapse inward, the Yamal craters have raised edges. Even more remarkable, debris like rocks and ice is scattered far beyond the holes, as far as 500 meters away. This kind of debris could suggest something like an asteroid impact, but there's no evidence of an object hitting Earth. That leaves scientists with one logical explanation, a gigantic natural explosion. It's hard to imagine a process like this happening for the first time in our lifetimes, or even in recorded scientific history, but that's exactly what seems to be unfolding. There's no lava or volcanic rock, so it's not a volcano. However, when scientists explored inside one of these craters and tested the air and water at the bottom, they found a clue. Unusually, high levels of methane. As researchers explored deeper into these eerie craters, they found something scary. The methane wasn't coming from conventional gas deposits. It's escaping from something far more dangerous, something hidden deep under the Arctic for thousands of years. But human-caused climate change, driven by burning fossil fuels and deforestation, is heating the planet and stirring this hidden force. Scientists were shocked, realizing this was their worst fear coming true. The awakening of the sleeping giant. Permafrost. Permafrost, a piece of permanently frozen ground that has stayed locked in ice for thousands of years. It's a vast, frozen expanse that blankets nearly 25% of the Northern Hemisphere's land surface. You'll find it stretching across places like Siberia, Alaska, and Northern Canada, regions we know as the Arctic Circle. For millennia, this ground has been a silent, icy guardian, preserving everything trapped within it. Well, permafrost is not just frozen dirt. It's Earth's deepest freezer, a vast archive of our planet's history. For thousands of years in the Arctic and millions in Antarctica, this permanently frozen ground has locked away more than just ice. It contains the remains of ancient plants animals, and a tremendous amount of carbon. When we drill into permafrost, we're peering back in time. In Alaska's Fox Tunnel, scientists walk among the preserved remains of extinct steppe bison and woolly mammoths. Green plants, frozen 20,000 years ago, still retain their chlorophyll, their final moment of life suspended. These aren't just scientific curiosities. They're windows into Earth's climate history. But permafrost isn't uniformly frozen. Its topmost layer, called the active layer, thaws each summer and refreezes each winter. This natural breathing of the landscape has shaped Arctic ecosystems for millennia. The active layer typically ranges from 30 to 200 centimeters deep, while beneath it, permafrost can extend more than 1,500 meters. This frozen ground is not limited to remote areas. It underlies towns and cities across the Arctic. Native communities have adapted to life on this frozen foundation for generations, developing specialized knowledge and techniques. In Alaska alone, some 170,000 people live directly on permafrost. In Russia, entire cities like Yakutsk, with hundreds of thousands of residents, are built atop it. For these communities, Permafrost isn't an abstract scientific concept. It's literally the ground beneath their feet. Indigenous peoples like the Inupiat in Alaska have carved ice cellars into the permafrost to preserve whale meat and other foods. It's a living, working relationship with the frozen earth. But this relationship is now under unprecedented strain. In the span of a single human lifetime, the certainty of permanent frost is disappearing. The frozen archive is beginning to thaw, and with it, 
secrets and dangers long buried are coming to light. The craters of Yamal Peninsula aren't the only warning signs of permafrost's dramatic awakening. In northern Alaska, a remote frozen lake reveals something equally alarming. You will see rising bubbles trapped in the ice, creating a mesmerizing pattern, stacked like frozen coins in crystal clear ice. What's causing this phenomenon? It's methane, a potent greenhouse gas erupting from below. When researchers poke holes into these bubble columns and apply a flame, the result is spectacular. Jets of fire shooting several feet into the air. So what's happening beneath these lakes? With the lake bottom too dark to see, the scientists deploy a sonar scan. What they find is startling. Many thaw chimneys, columns of unfrozen material extending hundreds of feet creating pathways for deep, ancient methane to escape. The methane in these bubbles isn't just coming from recently thawed organic matter. Chemical analysis shows it's seeping up from fossil methane deposits, millions of years old, that have been safely trapped beneath the permafrost cap for eons. Scientists estimate there are around 1.3 trillion tons of methane stored beneath the Arctic, nearly 250 times more than exists in Earth's atmosphere today. This thawing permafrost is developing an intricate network of channels and holes, creating pathways for ancient greenhouse gases to reach the surface. This concerning development has not been fully incorporated into current climate models, representing a significant unknown factor in our understanding of future climate change. Across the Arctic, Average temperatures have risen by more than 3 degrees Celsius in recent decades, more than twice the global average. This dramatic warming is thawing permafrost at rates not expected until the end of the century. In some places, thaw rates have doubled since the mid-1970s. The Yamal craters represent the most explosive evidence of this change, literal blowouts where pressure from trapped gas builds until it erupts with catastrophic force Scientists have documented at least eight such craters since 2014, all appearing during unusually warm periods. Each crater and bubbling lake is a signal that the Arctic's methane time bomb is beginning to detonate piece by piece. And as we'll see, methane is just the beginning of what permafrost has locked away. Permafrost holds about 15 to 1700 gigatons of carbon nearly twice as much as currently exists in Earth's atmosphere. For comparison, humans have emitted about 410 gigatons of carbon since the Industrial Revolution. Permafrost has over three times that locked away until now. How did so much carbon end up frozen underground? Well, in warmer regions, when plants and animals die, they decompose quickly, releasing their carbon back into the atmosphere. But in the Arctic, the extreme cold drastically slows this process. Before decomposition can finish, winter freezes the remaining organic matter. Over thousands of years of this cycle, layer upon layer of partially decomposed material became trapped in permafrost. Now as temperatures rise, this frozen carbon bank is being withdrawn. Microbes reactivate and begin breaking down the ancient organic matter releasing carbon dioxide in dry conditions or methane in wet areas like lakes and wetlands. The Arctic is transitioning from a carbon sink to a carbon source. Measurements show that carbon dioxide emissions from North Alaskan wilderness have spiked by more than 70% since the mid-1970s. Current observations suggest a net release of 300 to 600 million metric tons of carbon per year from permafrost regions. What makes this situation especially dire is that permafrost emissions, unlike human-generated carbon sources, cannot be regulated or controlled. Once the thawing process begins, it can persist for hundreds of years. Current climate models and carbon budgets are likely underestimating the true scale of potential emissions, as they don't fully account for this unstoppable release from thawing permafrost this vast frozen carbon reservoir is now beginning to destabilize, 
throwing into question our understanding of future climate trajectories. Perhaps the most alarming aspect of permafrost thaw isn't just the release of greenhouse gases, it's the vicious cycle it creates. This is known as the permafrost carbon feedback loop, and it's a climate scientist's nightmare. Here's how it works. As global temperatures rise, permafrost begins to thaw. This thawing releases methane and carbon dioxide, which trap more heat in the atmosphere. This additional warming thaws more permafrost, which releases more greenhouse gases, creating a self-reinforcing cycle. What makes this feedback particularly concerning is that methane is approximately 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide at trapping heat over a 100-year period and 84 times more potent over a 20-year time span. While methane doesn't stay in the atmosphere as long as carbon dioxide, its short-term impact is enormous. The physical landscape visibly demonstrates this feedback in action. As permafrost thaws, the ground often collapses in a process called thermokarst. This creates depressions that fill with water, forming new lakes. These lakes absorb more solar energy than the surrounding land due to their darker surface, warming the permafrost beneath and alongside them even faster. A chilling example of a feedback loop in action can be seen at Badagaika in Siberia. In the 1960s, a small strip of forest was cleared to build a road. The exposed permafrost began to thaw, causing the ground to sink. This pulled down more trees at the edge, exposing more permafrost. Today, what started as a small human disturbance has grown into a massive crater nearly 300 feet deep and half a mile wide, and it's still growing. Scientists are now rushing to incorporate these feedback effects into climate models. Current estimates suggest that by 2100, permafrost thaw could contribute as much greenhouse gas emissions as a large industrial nation. Some projections indicate that feedback effects from permafrost emissions could use up between 25 to 40 percent of our remaining carbon budget to stay below 2 degrees Celsius warming. In the language of climate science, we may be approaching a tipping point, the moment when these cycles become unstoppable, regardless of human action. It took tens of thousands of years to put this ice into the ground. Now, it's melting. To put all this ice into the ground back, you will need several tens of thousands of years. So that's, for humans, definitely an irreversible process. It is a tipping point. While greenhouse gas emissions represent the global threat of permafrost thaw, for Arctic communities, the danger is immediate and literally underfoot. The stable foundation these northern towns have relied on for generations is becoming anything but stable. Infrastructure is failing as the ground beneath shifts. Houses built on wooden pilings are tilting as their foundations sink unevenly. Roads buckle and crack water and sewage lines rupture. In Russian cities like Norilsk, about 60% of buildings show damage from permafrost thaw, but the impacts go beyond infrastructure. Indigenous communities face profound threats to their way of life. Along coastlines, the combination of retreating sea ice and thawing permafrost has accelerated erosion. Communities that once had a buffer of frozen ground protecting them from Arctic storms now find their land literally washing away. In some Alaskan villages, erosion rates have accelerated from a few feet per year to 50 feet or more annually. At least 12 indigenous communities are now planning full or partial relocations, a costly and culturally traumatic process. The economic toll is mounting. Estimates suggest permafrost thaw damage to infrastructure could cost $30 billion in Alaska alone by 2050. Across the entire Arctic, the price tag could reach $300 billion. As permafrost thaws, it's not just greenhouse gases being released. The frozen Earth is giving up its secrets, including things that perhaps should have remained buried. In Siberia, the melting ground regularly exposes the remains of woolly mammoths, complete with flesh and fur, preserved for thousands of years. But alongside Ice Age megafauna, smaller, potentially more dangerous things are awakening. In 2016, on Russia's Yamal Peninsula, 
where those mysterious craters appear, an anthrax outbreak killed a boy and sickened dozens. The source was traced to a 75-year-old reindeer carcass thawing from the permafrost during an unusually warm summer, releasing viable anthrax spores. Permafrost is a remarkably effective preserver of microbes and viruses due to its cold, oxygen-free, and dark environment, potentially harboring pathogenic viruses from past epidemics that could infect humans or animals. Most of these microorganisms have been frozen since before humans existed in these areas. Our immune systems have never encountered them. This makes the thawing Arctic a potential public health emergency, especially considering the scientists have already successfully revived ancient microorganisms from permafrost, including 48,000-year-old viruses from Siberia, the oldest ever revived, proving that these ancient microorganisms can remain viable after thawing. We stand at a critical crossroads in the story of permafrost. While much remains uncertain about exactly how quickly and extensively permafrost will thaw, scientists are clear that we face a narrowing window to influence the outcome. Current projections suggest that without significant emissions reductions, between 30 to 70 percent of near-surface permafrost could disappear by 2100. This wide range of outcomes hinges largely on human decisions. In high emissions scenarios, where greenhouse gas emissions continue to increase throughout the century, permafrost loss accelerates dramatically. In contrast, scenarios where emissions peak soon and then decline steeply could preserve significant portions of this frozen landscape. The fate of permafrost and its impact on our global climate ultimately depends on choices made far from the Arctic. By reducing emissions now, we buy time for communities to adapt and for scientists to develop solutions. Conversely, continued high emissions accelerate us toward potential tipping points where permafrost feedback loops could escape human influence entirely. In this frozen landscape, nature has preserved a record of Earth's past. Now it's sending us a message about our future. The question is whether we're listening and what we'll do with the time we have left.